Today, promote the opportunity for each person to obtain housing of such person's choice in this community without regard to any of the categories stated in the proclamation. I didn't, I won't read them off. And that's it, sir. Great. Thank you. Please come on up. Okay. Housing Act of 1968 guarantees the right of all Americans, regardless of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, familial status, or disability, to live in the neighborhood of their choice. For 51 years, all individuals have been entitled to equal housing opportunities when they're running, buying, and securing financing for any housing in the United States. Therefore, we, the Board of County Commissioners of Allegheny County, do proclaim April 2019 as Fair Housing Month in Allegheny County and do commend this observance to all of our citizens. I signed all three county commissioners, Creed Brody, Dave Caparelli, and Jake Shea. Thank, Thank you for your work on that. Yeah. Thank you. Did you need a real quick? Okay. Thank you. Dave. Oh, can we get a picture? Oh, okay. Say above the fold. Next up, we have the uh, Maryland State Department of Commerce application for enterprise zones. Mr. Nedved. Um, commissioners, this is a uh, public hearing for the Route 220 South Enterprise Zone recertification. The Route 220 South Enterprise Zone, it consists of 404 acres and it's up for renewal through the State of Maryland's Department of Commerce in accordance with COMAR 24 dot period 05 period 01 period 14A and 14B. The Enterprise Zone program is a tax incentive program providing property and or income tax credits to qualified companies in accordance with state and local standards. Currently, there is one large manufacturer, American Woodmark, in the park, in the zone, which employs 572 people. Uh, and this being a public hearing, is there anyone here that would like to comment or has a question on the proposed recertification? Any public comment? Okay. Hearing none, this closes the public hearing for the Route 220 South Enterprise Zone recertification. Great. Are we taking action tonight or? Uh, for, for no, it's just a hearing. And just a hearing and we'll take action for further date. Oh, there's a resolution. Oh, there's too. a resolution? Yeah. Well, then you have the resolution. Yeah. yeah. Action. Well, that's action oh, item, item three. three. Yes. We'll get Assuming there. Assuming nobody commented. That's, we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, it, the, the resolution is to formally request state designation of the approximately 404 acres of land of area in the Route 220 area to become eligible for state and local tax relief and other economic incentives. Okay. Well, so essentially, just so you know, this is a redesignation of the right. yep. essentially the existing zone, which yep. is there. It's a renewal. So item number three, it's resolution 19-5. It's enterprise zone designation for the east side of Route 220, Pinto, would be eligible for state and local tax relief and other economic incentives. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. Thank All right, you. Item, number, you, item number four is the Maryland Mortgage Program. Okay, commissioners, I'm gonna read a little bit here because I, I wanna get the information into the record. Um, the Maryland Mortgage Program provides below rate mortgages for home ownership to the residents of Allegheny County. One does not have to be a first time home buyer to participate in this program. The Maryland Mortgage Program offers a variety of programs. Current income limits are very generous with 115,800 being the upper limit for one or two person households 
and $135,100 being the upper limit for a household of three or more. So you can see a lot of people will qualify for these programs. The maximum acquisition cost is $331,423 for existing or newly constructed homes. Again, a very generous number. The website for the program is mmp.maryland.gov. The program is accessed through various mortgage lenders throughout the state of Maryland, but Allegheny County, the participating lenders are BB&T Corporation and First United Bank and Trust. The contact for the program at BB&T Corporation is Kelly Palomar, and I can, uh, it, we, can, we have her phone number and her email address, but the best thing to do is just call the bank directly. And the contact for the program at First United Bank and Trust is Travis Boer. And again, call, call them directly and they'll give you his email or his phone number. Uh, at this time, I'm asking that the Board of County Commissioners <coughs> authorize the transfer of funds to the Community Development Administration's Maryland Mortgage Program for issuance of tax-exempt housing bonds on behalf of Allegheny County and authorize the president to sign the letter of transfer. Uh, commissioners? A couple of years ago, wasn't the interest rate on this higher than what the normal interest rate was at the banks? Do you, um, do you remember that? And, and it wasn't getting utilized, and then yeah, it kind of changed. Yeah, but it's gotten better yeah. because it, it's getting used more. And I also think the marketing of it's been, sure. been made better. Yeah, I, I, I know. I thought it was interesting that the, the subsidized interest rate right. was higher than the the regular interest yeah. rate. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Is there a motion to accept item number four? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank right. you, Commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Morgan. All right. Item number five is our tourism reinvestment grant. We have our tourism director, Ms. Ashley Workman. Welcome back. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. Allegheny County Tourism enhances the quality of life in Allegheny County, Maryland, and strengthens destination awareness through promotion, development, and services that attract visitors to stay longer and spend more money in our community. Allegheny County Tourism is encouraging the adoption of a new pilot grant program for fiscal year 2020, and is seeking the Board of County Commissioners to authorize the program and $25,000 for the grant pool. The Allegheny County Tourism Reinvestment Marketing Grant purpose is to enhance the tourism experience, increase overnight stays in Allegheny County, generate visitor spending in county, and to enhance and grow the tourism products and destination awareness. The grant will be available to qualifying 501c3 and 501c6 organizations and will be awarded to marketing and promotion focused projects with an aim to reach audiences through media outlets and development. This program is designed to create transparency, promote healthy competition, foster co-partnership throughout, throughout the county, and to educate our community on the importance of hotel motel tax being reinvested into programming and opportunities that generate tourism growth. Grant guidelines and application details will be announced in early May. A committee will review in June, and grants will be issued at the beginning of July. Great. Commissioners, this is something we've been talking about for, for several months, and Ashley, you and um, Jess Palumbo, thank you for all your work on sure. this. And uh, because we're, we're starting this program from scratch, the idea behind it was, you know, we have similar groups that seem to apply for money every year. We want to see how, how we can get new groups in the budgeting process, especially for one-time projects. So we're going to see how this goes. and. Um, Please stay tuned in, in May for the actual application and uh, the submittal process. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'll make the motion we uh, accept the Tourism Reinvestment Grant. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Thank Ashley. Very good, sir. All right, moving to the consent agenda. Mr. Butler. Good evening, commissioners. We have 10 items on the consent agenda. Item number six is resolution 19-6. It's uh, various re uh, revisions to the rules and regulations governing employees of Allegheny County. Item number seven is a Care First Blue Cross uh, Blue Shield dental plan renewal. Item number eight is a Metropolitan Life Insurance Plan renewal. Item number nine 
is the Vision Benefits of, of America uh, Plan Renew Renewal. Excuse me. Item number 10 is the Old Town Community Park uh, Operation and Maintenance Agreement. Uh, item number 11 is the Allegheny County Paving Contract Bid Award. Item number 12 and 13 are various declarations of surplus vehicles. Item number 14 is the Allegheny County Department of Social Services Board Appointments. And item number 15 are uh, five additional item or five additional appointments to the Allegheny County Board uh, Commission for Women and uh, Commissioners, uh, if I may, let me just read those names uh, in for the record. Uh, that, that would be Mary Jo Walters, Debbie Grimm, Lisa Griffith, Debbie Ross, and Michelle Stallman Twig. Uh, again, Commissioners, the, uh, that will make now the appointments at 10. Uh, these, uh, the 10 appointed uh, positions will now then pick uh, we'll, we'll solicit applications uh, for five uh, additional spots uh, for the remaining, uh, to make a total of 15 members of the Allegheny County Commission for Women. Great. Okay. Gentlemen, any discussion? No, sir. I'll make a motion. We accept the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? All, All right. right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Because uh, we do have some folks signed up, we'll start with them tonight. Mr. Harold Fike. Uh, good evening. Um, I was hoping if I could hook up and use the projector to show some pictures. I don't know if that's something I could do. Is there, uh, not in any timely okay. manner, we're told. Plug in. Okay. Um, well, I'll go ahead and speak. If you could just show it to us, maybe. Yeah, or? I can do that. Um, my name is Harold Fike. I live on 81 Lavelle Court. Uh, I'm here uh, representing some of my neighbors. Um, we've had uh, flooding issues since I've lived there. I've lived there uh, four or five years. Um, it gets pretty bad where we are. We have a lot of stormwater that runs off of Weir's Avenue behind us. Uh, comes down through the back of our yards. Uh, washes out the road behind our house and uh, causes a lot of issues and it's only getting worse as or I should say it has only gotten worse as more development is done on Weir's. Um, before, before last night I was aware of the problem since I, since I lived there um, and I'll, I'll turn around and show you some pictures here in a moment but uh, I was given some letters uh, dating back over 20 years uh, where the issue has been brought to the county's attention has been brought to uh, our delegate Kelly's attention and um, we've not had any action on it and it's continued to be worse. Um, I'll show you some of these pictures here. Um, this, this is from a few years ago um, but when we get a lot of flooding it looks very similar to this. We have a nice river down through here. Uh, my children like it until it gets this high and can sweep them away. But it's, it's currently the stormwater drains are not able to obviously take care of this. And I know uh, there's a, a video here uh, that shows some of the same thing that the, the pictures uh, show. In the streets up that way. That so correct? that is uh, Panama. Okay. And it's Eleanor Street, uh, which is this street right here. Okay. Lavelle Court is out uh, in front of the houses. And then Weir's is up here. I think the camera will pan up. And uh, this is Weir's back here. So. All of the water that comes down, there's not adequate storm drains to take care of it. And so um, this ditch is maybe four feet deep here. And you can see that it's just overwhelming that culvert there. Um, the video goes on to show a lot of what the picture is shown. Um, like I said, we have, uh, this was given to me last night, so and I, can, and I can provide copies of it to you all. Um, we have a letter I have dated here uh, in 98. Um, to uh, Mr. Roger Thomas, state construction engineer, uh, just informing him of the issue. Um, apparently, 98, uh, May 6 of 98 was uh, particularly bad. Um, neighbors, a uh, number of neighbors signed that. This was obviously before I lived in the area, or lived in uh, the street. Um, July of 99, a letter was sent to Delegate Kelly um, with 32 signatures attached to it. Um, he responded back and forwarded that on to uh, Storm, uh, on to, let me see who's that, uh, mm -hmm. Jane uh, Nishida, 
uh, Office of the Secretary of the Maryland Department of uh, Environment. Um, there was a response that was forwarded on uh, talking about a study was supposed to take place. Um, the study, as this goes on through the 2000s and 2002, the study took place. Um, and uh, we also have a letter from August of 2008 where there was uh, to be uh, 1,700 feet of pipe, uh, 10 storm drains uh, placed in this area to deal with this problem. That never happened. Um, the, this letter is from August 8th of 2008 uh, to uh, uh, Mr. Richard Pesta, who lives on 75 Lavelle Court, um, from the Allegheny County Department of Public Works, um, Adder, Adam Peterson or Patterson, Patterson. and um, but it, it, it details out what the problem, what the plan was to solve this problem. Um, I've lived there for a few years, like I said, uh, for about four or five years. The issue that really brings me here tonight is I now have a sinkhole. Uh, that is encroaching uh, in my backyard. I'll show you some pictures here. This uh, first picture was taken, um, got home after uh, being at the family's house on December 31st, late in the evening. I could hear running water that I normally don't hear next to my carport. I shine a light around and I find the sinkhole here. Um, this is in February. Um, and then this is a video from March where it has developed quite a bit. Um, those blocks are eight inches uh, each for center blocks, plus a couple inches top and bottom. Uh, it's, you know, it's a few feet deep. I crawled down in there, uh, and it's continuing to go back under my driveway. Um, this is a problem that, uh, this is obviously a problem. Um, the stormwater the storm drain is failing. Um, it's isn't getting any better, uh, and uh, I, I like to I call it my sinkhole. Um, however, recently uh, started looking at some of the property maps, and um, my sinkhole is actually not my sinkhole. It is in an alleyway. It is not on my property. Uh, so the the question becomes, and, and I have a property map that's you know a couple years old, but um, based off of what uh, myself and my neighbors were able to find from markings that are known. Uh, there's a, a, a I guess paper alley, the alley exists on paper. Um, lots of people like to use it, and I don't mind because I know it's an alley. People cut through there um, and, and cross there to the different streets. Uh, the issue becomes that this, this and in the video I'm sure you saw my children running around there. I have three small children. I have, uh, I have a trampoline, so I have a lot of children <laughs> coming to my property, uh, swings in the backyard and everything. Who, who come and they, they enjoy playing in our backyard. Um, I had a, a friend give me a grate to cover the sinkhole. The grate is no longer big enough uh, to cover it. I'm gonna have to find something else. But the, the realization that this isn't on my property gives me uh, concern in two ways. Um, it's not something that I can really fix, I feel, is in, is in my uh, means to fix because it's not on my property. Um, it is a danger and the, uh, I met with uh, uh, Dan DeWitt. Uh, he came out in, uh, multiple times. He's here. I appreciate him coming out and taking a look at it. Uh, but the, the current proposal of uh, me being responsible for fixing this, uh, or, or at least 50% of it, uh, seems, seems a little, uh, doesn't seem like the right thing as this isn't even on my property. Initially, I thought it was on my property, so I was going to take care of it. But now that it's not on my property, um, I'm sort of at a loss of what a good good uh, uh, way to move forward where I'm not paying out of pocket to fix a problem that's not mine. Um, it is a danger, obviously. I'm trying to cope with it as best I can. However, uh, if, it's, if the current uh, proposal is 50%, what happens if a child falls in there? Am I, am I gonna cover 50% of legal costs when a child is injured or is killed by falling into this thing or being trapped in there? Uh, I would just like to, to bring it to the attention as it's been an issue for at least, I say at least 20 years. That's the last, the oldest letter that I was presented with last night of where it has been brought to the county's attention and to the state's attention. Um, I would appreciate anything that can be done. Again, I'm covering it as best as I, as best I can right now. Um, the issue has manifested in this sinkhole. However, the issue where the drain water on weirs is, is obviously a problem. We, I have an elderly neighbor, neighbor, I think she's in her 80s, is out daily cleaning a culvert so she doesn't have water flood into her basement because it has been so bad before 
that the culverts that aren't aren't uh, designed to take the amount of water that's there, um, she feels like she's out daily doing it, and she, she's 80 years old. So, I think this is something that that should I feel strongly should be should be addressed, uh, considering the issues it's causing and, and now the danger it is causing. So, I appreciate anything you can do uh, to help us out with this. Th this is a really hard one because this problem was actually started by Cover when the development was put in. It, it, as this person built, they piped, they moved, they piped, they moved, they pushed the problem up. None of this was ever, ever the county's drainage system. I was actually the first one out there to look at your drain hole because I work in LaVale and it's right there at the junction box where a bunch of pipes go together and go out to Eleanor Street. Uh, I've talked to Dan. I don't know what the, the real solution to this is other than when Streetscape went through in 2008, there was pipes put off LaVale Court, Parkside, LaVale Boulevard. It probably was close, let's see, five, six, seven, probably close to 1,000 feet between them three streets where it was run up so far to tie in the most immediate problem. The issue with dumping everything and piping everything back to Eleanor Street is there's a, just a little car, uh, culvert that runs underneath where Rick's got his garage down there. That all goes into just a little stone culvert that goes under 40. It's only a little box square. So if, if you would open up all of Elmer Street, which was a water line and a sewer line in, because when I was started there 20 years ago, you could actually drive that street from one end to the other. Mm -hmm. You would put it down there at, at the bottom of Harold Street, and then it floods and goes over 40 because there's not enough drainage air unless it's... Dan, I, I don't know what to, the, I mean, I was out in Glen Oaks the other night for the same issue. I've been in Western Port this week for the same issue. I've been in Coney this week for the, for the same issue. An issue, issue I've actually looked at a long time in LaVale. What's the solution? I, mean, I, I know what the solution is. The solution is, is for, to cover half these projects, roughly about $20 million, which don't exist. And, and water runs downhill. I mean, since I've been at LaVale Sanitary Commission for 20 years, I can think of two houses that's been built on weirs. So the issue is as long as it all funnels down, it comes down, unfortunately, that's where it runs. I mean, we, we, we've actually run the models on it. We know where water is going to flow. It's, it's just the cost of this and, and who bears the cost of this. It was never ours. It was covered, like I say, piecemeal to piece of this together. It started back in the early 50s. <laughs> I'm a loss, so. Mr. Pike, is absolutely right in this situation, unfortunately, the amount of water coming down the mountain into the pipes is yes. greater than it's going to be able to be handled. Under the current depletion program that we've had in place for many years, any solutions that we'd be pursuing would be more as a band aid addressing the symptomatic things, which absolutely would solve the single problem. But at their point, which I agree with, is that they'd be putting funds for a problem that could very likely come right back again. again. And we would be not wasting money, but needing to repeat money spending over and over again to fix a problem that's not going to go away because the pipe is simply undersized. To put in a system big enough to handle what needs to happen, to be able to carry that flow through there safely would be very disruptive to either all of Elmer Street, as you mentioned, or the entirety of their backyards. Unfortunately, a similar situation exists above Weirs Avenue, below Weirs Avenue, as you mentioned, crossing 40, on the other side of 40, all the way down to Braddock Run. So addressing that problem right there would help these folks specifically, but it would create many issues other places. Mm -hmm. There are half a dozen folks I've dealt with in the past year with this very similar problem. So it's, the solution would need to be very wide ranging and perhaps disruptive, but it's it's not something that can just go out with backup and start digging. It, it, it needs to be a little bit more thoughtfully executed and require cooperation for many parties. You know, before Roger Thomas retired from NRCS, which is actually who he worked for, uh, I actually met him there in 99. He was looking at, at trying to find some funding to the federal government because Unfortunately, what brings money is disasters. And at that time, he was looking at some stuff that was left over from the 96 flood, and that's what got it all started to go up into there. Is there any avenues through MDE or soil conservation, NRCS, for any type of monies that we could apply for to apply to this area? We, we can certainly check. The, the biggest success we've had is 
we've had as of late in the last few years in getting large amounts of grant funding is through DNR when there is another environmental benefit and it's not a strictly capital related project. Any project where we're putting in large amounts of pipes and structures and it's not going to be improving environmental habitat is going to be a stretch. We can certainly reach out to there, but it's it's a very big difference between solving their immediate problem, which mm -hmm. is what would be more appropriate for the 50 50 program we've had in place for the past several years versus what's going to prevent this issue from continuing to happen on a 10, 20 year storm. So it, it's a it's a big difference and it's it's something that even if I do my very best to track down funding sources, which is absolutely fine, it may be a fruitless effort for many, many years. So the number of folks that are impacted by this may it, raise the alarm a little bit, but it, I, I don't have enough of a sense from NBE if, if that's something shaking the tree is going to yield anything that's going to <coughs> I don't normally like to get into the environmental impacts side of stuff because, but I, I see what the state's spending up there to, to drain a pond to create a pond, and I'm going to do something I rarely ever do and ask Brandon to reach out to Secretary Grumbles and shake him as hard as he can on this because I do believe there's an environmental <coughs> impact and I do believe that 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 saving life should trump everything. Yep. And, and some of these issues are going to have to sooner or later be addressed. I mean, it, this has been an issue, and we know it's an issue. Uh, the, there's pipes at the bottom of each one of these roads to start to correct some of this. Unfortunately, we run out of money real quick when we run them up Parkside. It, it made it not quite to the school of Vale Boulevard, made it up not quite halfway, and the court didn't make it that far. It's only right there around the, the upper end of the bank. Because uh, everything actually starts and comes across or under houses. I mean, I know I was up with the camera and looked at some of these. Some of these storm drains run right underneath the people's house. And I mean, Cover, <clears throat> he piped it and built the houses over top of it. Uh, unfortunately for, for you guys and all that's left now, he's gone and passed away, and the issue is really starting to show itself now. So anything I can tell you is we will try our very best. But I know it exists because I see it every day. Mm -hmm. So and, and I understand. It's, it's obviously a countywide issue. I just... Yeah. I have concerns for the children and my neighbor's children. With yeah, because so when I was up and looked at it, and, and you had the two pieces of plywood sitting over it in the sawhorse, you know, I, I talked to, to Dan and Adam while I was standing there looking at it, and I said, I can see it's it, it's an issue. It's right at the corner of his driveway. If he comes in here with a vehicle and someone opens the door and a kid steps out, they're right in it. And a, and a vehicle is why yeah. there's another grade over it because the vehicle but, drove into it and it collapsed even more. So that's the... Uh, so I appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fike. Um, all right. Next up, we have Mr. Kenneth Wilmot. Um, Kenneth Wilmot. I live at 513 Ford Avenue, Cumberland, Maryland. Uh, I don't know where to start or end. But anyway, I would like to congratulate everybody here sitting in front of me for the past 10 years and the city officials. You have been quite successful. Our bird population is down to about 99%. Uh, who needs birds? Nobody, apparently. <coughs> Going or the, I didn't see one cardinal. That, that's these red birds. That, Used to be here about a dozen. I didn't see a single one this, this winter. I've got two cubbies, uh, morning doves. They have vanished. And so on and so on. There used to be three families of pileated peck, woodpeckers in the Constitution Park. They visit my property quite regularly. I got pictures, if anybody would like to see them. But anyway, congratulations. Uh, you know, a single bird only eats 2,000 bugs a day, but we, we can take care of that. We'll just spray and kill everything, you know. It's good for the economy for the spray. <clears throat> but anyway, just think our generations of children to come, that they'll never hear a beautiful Dove cooing, 
or the call of a pileated woodpecker, or a cuckoo bird. All these birds that we used to hear during the evening, whippoorwills, you name them, they're all gone. But congratulations, we don't have to worry about them anymore. We have 40,000 cats that we can play with in Allegheny County. Feral cats are a problem all over the world. Australia has now placed a $30 bounty on feral cats, which is something we need to do. I've had 17 cats this past winter paroling, patrolling my property. They've cleaned up everything. Congratulations. It's pathetic. Doesn't anybody have any feelings for other animals in this world other than cats and dogs? Animal control is supposed to control the population. They haven't controlled the population of the cat in this county, not one I owe them. So there you have it. My time is getting short. I've got more miles behind me than I do in front of me. I wish you all good luck. I don't know where our children are going to be able to see birds and squirrels and whatever. Of course, they can always get on their computer or their smartphone and look them up and listen to them. Ain't that great? That's simply great. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wilmot. Um, Mr. Butler. I have nothing. Mr. Rudd. Nothing. Mr. Caparelli. Nothing to add. Thank you. Mr. Brody. Sir, as we wind down to our the start of our budget process today, uh, which is, is we got a big hole to fill, and I'm confident we're going to be able to do it. I I, I do feel with Mr. Fike and the residents there of, of as, as we get through the budget process, it seems like everybody comes in here and picks our pockets clean, and some of the services that we need to be able to help with it seems like we're not able to, and I do think that we owe the citizens some, and sooner or later we're going to have to tell these other people no, because we got our own problems that we got to deal with. In the last 10 years, I do feel Allegheny County, we've been really, really good at trying to help everyone else with their problems, but we ain't been able to help ourselves, and that's really starting to, to weigh on me, and I know it's weighing on you and Commissioner Caparelli, too, because you hear the same thing and we see the same thing. So, Great. So I've been thinking about this for for days because that's all I've spent for the last two weeks is looking at issues around the county that, that I have to look at people and say, no, we don't have the money to fix that. No, we can't do that. And it'd be nice to be able to say, yes, we can help. And so instead of shoveling money out of this place to help people blow it on stuff that's really not important, just my opinion. So, Mr. Wilma? Uh, I read the paper today. We're getting, what, $21 million here in Allegheny County? Uh, that's a drop in the bucket compared to what they're spending down at the other end of the state. They're spending, not millions, but billions. They're expanding that metro here and there, everywhere. Something, we have to change their policy of uh, the population, the money goes to the, the population, whatever, and our population keeps going down, so we're, yeah. we're getting the short end of the stick. Yeah, and, and the other thing to keep in mind, a lot of that money um, was going to Frostburg State, was going to build a new state police barracks. So, I mean, it's technically coming to Allegheny County, but it, they're not Allegheny County government-affiliated things. They're state-affiliated things. But it doesn't help. Um, it's not enough. Well, I, I agree with you. It, it, it's, it's a job. It, it just a simple little job in the gas So, um, it, before we close the meeting, Mr. Fike, thank you for coming today. Um, you know, th this is an issue that, that we are dealing with, not only on the, um, the drainage side, but, you know, it, it, people that, that have these OP roads is what they call them. They're, they're county right-of-ways. They're not county-maintained. A lot of them have never been county-maintained. Um, and, and some people know that. Some people don't when they buy their house. Um, you still pay the same taxes as everyone else. And, um, you know, I, I don't really think it's fair either. but. Um, I, I think there's over 250 some miles of those. Um, so for us to take that one's unrealistic. We're trying to do the best we can on, on that side of things as well. Um, 
the 50-50 match that we can kind of help with gravel or, or help blacktop or do whatever. It's not perfect, but we're trying to stretch those, those funds as far as we can. Um, we made sure that um, we got some money in the budget this year to really start going after those um, because it, it's not just places with one or two houses. There's some places that have 10 or 12 houses on it um, that, that are paying a lot of taxes and, and aren't getting any, any county benefits until they leave their, their main road or, or street. So that's something we're working on. Um, I, I will say this is probably the toughest budget that I've seen in my five years here. Um, a lot of that's being driven by steady revenue. We're not seeing any huge increases or decreases um, on the property <coughs> side of things. Um, we did lose $300,000 from the DNR pilot program, which, which has hurt us a little bit. Um, but but we're, we're looking at about a, a $1.5 to $1.6 million shortfall as we start this process. And um, we're, we're going to see what we can do to make sure we close that. And, and certainly, we don't want to raise taxes. So, so that's, that kind of takes out the revenue side of things. So I, I think as we move forward, we are going to have to have some serious discussions, and, and not just us as elected officials, but as everyone of, you know, what, what services do you want? What services do you want the government to provide? Um, you know, how quickly do you want a, an ambulance at your house? If, you know, if, if you don't live close to a, a station or, or close to other people, you know, it, it's going to take longer to get there. And there's going to be a cost associated with that. You know, we're, we're seeing volunteers drop off. Um, we, we had our budget session earlier this afternoon, and just Frostburg Ambulance Company, um, just one company, cost us zero dollars two years ago, 1.7 last year, and 2.8 million dollars this year. And so, you know, the, the, that that kind of increase is is unsustainable for any organization. It's unsustainable for us. So we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do on that. We're going to see what we can do to work with Cumberland to, to collectively see if we can get our costs contained a little bit. So that, that's what uh, this board's going to be working on the next six weeks. And uh, and I, I hope we can head to passage, I guess, on May 30th of a mm -hmm. final budget. Okay. With that, our next uh, public business meeting will be Thursday, April 25th at 5 p.m. I do think we have a, uh, a public... Uh, Work session. Work session on the budget will be next Thursday at 3 p.m. That's also the 18th. the 18th, and that's open to the public. That'll be here in room 212. Um, with that, the meeting's adjourned.